Welcome to theCUBE live coverage from Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. This is Google Next 23. I'm here with my co-host Rob Streche, and we've got two wonderful guests, Gaga Reen and Blair Stewart from Wipro, and they're going to tell us a bit about the Wipro Google Cloud Alliance. First, for those that may not be familiar with Wipro's services, tell us a little bit about the business and how that works with Google. Absolutely, thanks Rob. So obviously, you know, Google, you know, Wipro is a professional services company, and we've been you know, down the block for the last 30 or so years, you know, making a lot of advances in software services. Of late, you know, we've gone into this full stride cloud growth, which is all about cloud services provider, and Google business unit that I lead is sort of the newest you know, kid on the block. And over the last, I would say, couple of years, it has quadrupled uh, in our revenue, in our traction, you know, with customer adoption. At present, you know, we have close to 50 plus client engagements that we're doing in the business unit. We've got over 5,000 people certified. We've got tons of specializations, in you know, over 100 specializations. We just won the Partner of the Year Award yesterday from Congratulations. Google. Congratulations. You know, and having <laughs> been at Google prior to my Wipro stint, you know, I kind of feel really good that you know, they're starting to embrace the Googliness and the Google culture, yeah. and that's being sort of reflected as part of my organization as well. So in terms of growth, you know, I would say we are now at the top six GSIs that support Google in terms of you know, delivery, in terms of adoption, new areas like innovation like generative AI, where we were one of the launch partners, and we signed that trusted tester agreement that Google socialized three months ago, and we were the early adopters there as well. Yeah, and, and I think it's interesting that you have a business unit dedicated to Google. It would seem like, again, you're making investments in that, and it has yeah. to be significant. It, it definitely is, and I would say Wipro's investment into full stride cloud is the catalyst of the birth of the Google business unit, because three years ago it did not exist, but you know, with our CEO, Thierry Del Potti, going very big on the cloud growth, and thinking about the next five to 10 billion coming from cloud and AI, that's really what helped us to kind of achieve, and a lot of us folks, you know, Blair and me and others, we're all new. We've all sort of been here just a year or so, you know, so we've come from different companies and bringing our experience from the ecosystem to launch the business unit, and then eventually go into the areas like AI. You know, most recently we invested a billion dollars and we, in an initiative around AI, we call it AI 360, and the whole idea over there is to bring the best of, you know, some of our advances in AI that have been going on over the last 10 years within the workforce of Wipro and eventually reaching our clients. And as an output of that, we now have 250,000 employees at Wipro that are AI-centric, that are leveraging AI processes, and 50,000 of them are trained on Gen AI. Yeah. And out of those 50,000, if you go towards the Google business unit, we have 600 level three certified Gen AI practitioners wow. as part of the business unit all across the globe. So yes. Blair, maybe you can talk a little bit about the, what's special about Google Cloud here with respect to AI and how your clients are perceiving you know, the Wipro and, and Google working together. So, so um, along with the investment in, the, um, uh, in AI 360 and sort of bringing that forward, um, the real value we have is that we've been in this game for the last 10 years doing AI work and activity, um, or actually from a cloud sort of migration perspective, and part of what we actually won the uh, the wonderful uh, the, the award this year, um, our clients are looking at us now to actually bring that value forward and actually drive the value-based conversations for the migrations, the modernizations, the rollouts of the Gen AI use cases, etc. Yeah, and I, I think you were talking about there were some customers in, in certain industries that were really experiencing how they could leverage this and it really, er, you're helping them early on with that as well. 100%, and um, we're early um, uh, partners in the ramp program that Google are doing for that rapid migration. So unsticking the stuck cloud migrations, the new way of moving forward. Um, thinking around sort of, you know, monetizing data as the way of actually helping self-fund that migration program and taking it through. Um, we've been very fortunate that Google has leaned in with us and actually bought their cloud value team, and uh, sort of customer value team, and to help us drive that case for change, that case for value, and take it forward from there. Where do you see some of the adoption challenges? Maybe pitfalls, friction, headwinds from yeah. your clients, and how do you help them uh, pass that in terms of adopting uh, AI? and? Uh, a great question. You know, I would say, you know, with all the you know, elements of fear of missing out on the Gen AI wave that's been ongoing in the last year or so, and I would also say Google was a little late to the party in the sense, you know, when I was working at Google, they were very impressive with the transformer models, large language models back in 2016, 17. But the go-to-market side was still not there. Yeah. And it was all like inherent within you know, the brain team. 
So now, you know, with that advent of launching BARD and some of the frameworks back in February where Google's a little late, but then they signed GSIs like Wipro, yeah. what we are capitalizing is the use cases. Okay, you got, give us the framework, you know, your framework is one of the most cutting edge, you know, on the planet, but how do we apply that to, let's say, call center optimization? How do we make sure there's a cost reduction impact that applies to a particular customer? And we've actually cranked a few deals with Google together, it's sort of completely joint plays, you know, partnering with them, and customers starting to see that value. In the same sense, you know, Google launched the Kodi APIs. Now here we are talking about DevOps optimization that you're doing in the, le leveraging the language models within the stack. Now again, clients don't even know what it means. What it means is you're actually going down within the stack, building your Python code, optimizing your Terraform scripts, and making sure you're migration ready. Things like that, that are very simple to achieve, that took like, hours and sometimes months to do that for developers, right? But there's, but, a, there's an interesting yeah. part there as well about you know, what's net new, what's driving a different change in the actual yeah. market here. Um, the data uh, uh, comment I made before was a healthcare client that's actually looking at that different way of doing things, driving it forward. Um, some of the advances in what Google has achieved over the last couple of years have actually helped us move into, yeah. say for an automotive client, yeah. um, you know, modernization around PCF. Um, the, the tooling that's there, what we've created with our cloud studio, um, the abilities that we've brought on as part of that growth and the yeah. capability ourselves, that's giving us a bit of a, a paradigm change and a different conversation with the clients we've got. Yeah, what's the driver there? Is it the, the is it efficiency? Is it new lines of revenue? Is it the, you know adoption of innovation and better productivity? In, in, end of life for some things, or okay. I don't want to be patient for that extra piece of licensing. Apologies, uh, or it's <laughs> uh, or it is it is the cost and efficiency play. It's yeah. a risk play, um, and it's absolutely. Um, sort of enabling some form of cash flow or capability to do the new Gen AI stuff. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think you hit on a good point there, which is risk and yeah. security. And how, do, how do you deal with those concerns when you're, because that, that's all the, you know, can, we've been asking yeah. everybody yeah. from the Google side, yeah. hey, how do you handle security? How do you keep it separate? How do you keep the models from, you know, having data leakage. Sure. If Happy, I may, if yeah. I may take this one the way yeah, through. So, it, for it. a financial services client, one of the things we're actually doing with them is we're actually coming in and saying, right, to do what you want to do, you need to make sure that data foundation is secure. Yeah. The governance around that is actually secure. The yeah. responsible AI component yeah. on the way through. So, we're helping clients actually go back and reset that for the models they need to take forward. I think one more thing to add to Blair's point is, you know. Google's obviously taken the lead in responsible AI. That's embedded within the stack. You know, they put a lot of guardrails, checks and balances, and you take it down to your ITGC controls you yeah. know, within the stack. And that's important because when a customer gets audited, you need to have those. You know, and I've been in the big four world, so I kind of understand the control side of the pond really good. I would say they have literally gone deep into areas like sovereign cloud where yep. they are offering a cloud very distinct to a customer, the security is embedded within the landscape, data cannot leak out, they don't care, it's all customer's private data, yep. and then they have those APIs enabled within right. the stack. So when you think about the stack, you've got something known as model garden, which has out of the box model, and some of those achieve responsible AI embedment. Yep. And then you obviously can talk to the customer's models because those models are all open source, and it's a very open stack, and that's always been Google's policy is, make the stack open, be a little different than the other CSPs, and let partners and ISVs kind of work on top of that, and eventually helps them achieve more consumption sure. as well. So the advances with Mandy and with Chronicle, with the way that we've actually Correct. pulled that into our DevSecOps, for the abilities that we've been doing for the decades of you know, outsourcing that we've got experience of, of bringing on board, yeah. um, we're, we're seeing a new change in that, that means that we're actually putting some good value-based sort of services for things that people don't tend to think about. They just want to get in there and get the data going and get yep. it moving. Yeah. Now there's a broad spectrum of technologies that Wipro is yes. uh, working on. I know 5G is mm -hmm. near and dear to your hearts. Yeah. Uh, there's relation there to the cloud, certainly, yeah. to edge. Yeah. Uh, certainly AI plays now yeah. uh, with yeah. models and inferences at the edge. Bring that all together yeah. for us. So a, um, a, we've, we've actually recently launched a, um, a 5G innovation center in Austin. Uh, which My we're hometown, in yep. There you go. The best town. <laughs> the best town. Um, and, and, and part of what's driving that is the data story. Uh, so uh, we've, we've had the fortune of actually partnering some of, with, with some of our um, telco clients uh, and actually building out the broader story around what Google can offer in the space and what we can actually help then as the wrapped around services too. Um, it is a data play. Um, it is the, you know, there's a lot of use cases that are driving that forward. Um, 
and it's, it, it's, it's, it's another sort of expansion of what that new platform is or the new way of the broader cloud capability is that's coming to market. It's a data play, you're speaking Rob's love language. <laughs> yeah. I, don't I, know, I, yeah, I was going to say, the, 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 the it is about the data and the yeah. scalability, it's 100%. where the data lives, how Correct. to keep it secure. Yeah. How, how are you helping your customers through that whole process? Because uh, let's, I mean, be honest, not everything is in Google yeah. all the time. I can, I can elaborate quite that. a lot yeah. of that. So, you know, a couple of things on the data side. So when you think of a GCP cloud provider, right, it's very different than the other two because they lead with data. Yeah. They lead with a transformation story around data, and that's always been Google's model. You know, and many times it's a combination of on-premise, other CSPs, other SaaS companies, because companies like Databricks, Snowflakes, all these, you know. And this is where I compliment Google, especially Kevin Ishprani, who runs the corporate channels. The strategy that he has in opening up the stack with all the partners, so you can actually run a GCP engagement with a Databricks. I've done this at a client with a topology we laid out with a data lake sitting on Databricks, which was a big lake. Then you had BigQuery to do a lot of the BI work, and then you obviously had data coming from different source systems embedded to both of them streaming into BigQuery. Right, so this kind of model is very easy to achieve. Now, to your point about privacy and security, that's always a big play, you know, and again, Google has a lot of inherent capabilities, you know, and now with Mandiant, they're starting to make sure there's a threatware and all the ports are properly cyber secured and whatnot, which was not there like three years ago. And they're constantly advancing that and making sure customers are very secure. So a combination of security, data, and then business intelligence, you know, which is now part of Looker within the stack. And even there, you could have a Tableau running on top of BigQuery, you could have business objects or SAP doing that, stack is very open. But it makes our life as consultants much easier to build a topology for a customer because Google's giving us all the tools to yeah. do that. I, I've just been surprised that they hadn't talked much about that part of it today. It's almost like they're It's assuming, a Gen AI way. Yeah, I know, it's the Gen <laughs> AI, but you got to talk about the you do. nuts and bolts, which Correct. is why we're here now. Right? Yes, 100%. I think, and I think one of the things that gives us the one word pro perspective of, of what we can do, yeah. We've been in that conversation around security, we've been in that data conversation, and it may have been Google related, but with all of the advances we've done, with all the leaning in we're doing with them to actually kind of bring to market the likes of the you know, uh, managed expectations, yep. the managed services we want to build around that, we wrap that into the 5G conversation as well um, with our, um, our network provider friends yep. and, and build out something that is actually a, a, a cross Wipro, cross us and our partners sort of offering. Um, but I can't reinforce more. That, that secure data foundation, if you haven't done that, that's one thing you yeah. absolutely have to do. Well, I think that's, that's super interesting. Tell me a little bit about your approach. Uh, I'm assuming there's probably a proactive uh, mm -hmm. aspect of designing security, shifting left, doing that early and often, yep. uh, but also you know, responsive, right? Yep. The, it, the, the threats never end. Yep. So I think the best way we go to market is, you know, so the way we are architected at Wipro, you know, it's a very good model. We've got a cloud consulting which talks more about strategy, talks more about going, going to customers, looking at a landscape, doing assessments, and we bring together an arsenal of solutions that are embedded within a product that we launched called Cloud Studio. It's very centric to Wipro, it's got all the security checks and balances within there, you can scan a customer's landscape, you can have a good depiction of you know, what threatware and how secure it is, customized by the cloud provider. And that is something we can spin out very easily with a you know, few weeks uh, assessment or maybe a workshop to kick off things, and our client has a good sense about how secure the landscape is. Now we get into okay, designing workloads that we can optimize and start to migrate, you know, and that's again, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. As yep. Blair said, you know, so like clouds, we are doing the ramp program, the tool already does a lot of this for you. What we need to do is educate our customers on how it actually works, and we've spent like six years in evolving this whole product. Then it comes to, okay, now you kind of have that sense, what is the FinOps view? What is the consumption view? How much cost you are looking at, right? And then eventually, in the last three or six months, we've added Gen AI wrappers to it. So now it's a common, okay, fine. Can we talk, use leverage this in a call center model? Can we actually do prompt design, prompt engineering on top of this tool? And again, Google's leaning on us because they don't have the tools to do it. They're giving us a framework and saying, okay, embed that with Cloud Studio, with Wipro's Cloud Studio, and that gives you the Wipro differentiation. And in the next six months or so, you will see a lot about Wipro kind of taking the lead, especially with a billion dollar investment. Yeah. And a lot of that is sort of targeted towards cloud providers and Google is sort of taking the lead in that, right? And that's where we are in. I think the partnership with Google as well, um, we've worked yep. closely with their uh, team to develop effectively packs that can be like reference architectures that come yep. out. Yep. So for the financial services plan I was talking about, where they have a, a, a sort of a structure that needs repairing, 
we have reference architectures, we have the cloud studio sort of capability yeah. to come back in there and rapidly go, here's a gap you can plug. Yeah. Have that agreement that it's actually something that means something to the yeah. CISO yeah. as well. Yeah. Maybe I might put Duet AI into that to have some kind of uh, yeah. conversation yeah. there. But uh, we can do that directly. And yeah. one more thing to add to Blair's point. You know, now in the last year or so, there's a lot of new faces, you know, you'll see. We all came from the outside world where we are actually talking to the CFOs, the CISOs. You know, we've traditionally been targeting the CIO in Wipro, right? But now it's okay getting towards the CFO, getting towards the CEO, getting them to understand the transformation impact when it comes to building out an ESG story. Yep. And what's the Gen AI and embedment over there? When you're yep. building out your environment reports, you know, you have different kind of landscape, different kind of rules, different contracts, you know, yep. around things. How do you embed all of that, ingest that within the APIs and spin out some offerings? Yep. We don't go to a client with an empty slate. Yep. We give them a solutions catalog, catalog of use cases to choose from so they can start getting into that design thinking mode Right. And then get them going. Right. These are, this is the way Gen AI, this is the way traditional AI works, here's the differences, you know, things like that. And this is all a new way of thinking that was probably not there a couple of years ago, yep. you know, and you'll see more of this. So, so thank you. Uh, switching gears just for a second for our, our last question. Uh, I think we understand Wipro is a very much mission driven uh, company and culture. Uh, I think you wanted to tell us a little bit about you know, how Wipro fits into the greater global community. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's a topic very near and dear to me and one of the reasons what drew me to Wipro last year was, you know, we have something known as the Aziz Premji Foundation who's one of our, who was a founder of Wipro and it's all about you know, giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And at present, you know, over 66% of our profitability goes into a foundation that gives back to the community in, in areas like poverty stricken areas, like a school in a remote area of India. Uh, and this is very near and dear to Aziz Premji and even to our CEO and, and our chairman at Wipro. Because you know, it's all about, okay, everybody makes money, but how do you kind of make an impact? You know, and then it's all about getting philanthropy going and making sure people really get a sense of you know, the impact that Wipro is making to the society, and then eventually also making sure that we have a net zero story by 2040. So we That's, live ESG. Yeah. yeah. We actually have it as part Every of day. our culture. Right. I was so going to say that, that we could do an entire topic on that and go through your scope one, two, yeah. and three, but uh, yeah. That, yeah. that would take an entire hour probably, yeah. but I would love that in another time to go and dig love to into do that to the ESG yeah. portion of it. Absolutely, I mean that's just fascinating and I'm sure you get tremendous response from your clients and customers. We do so. and a lot of credit goes to our founders, you know, and, and the yeah. board members and folks that have, you know, the principles that Wipro has stood for in the last 30 years. You know, when I was a kid growing up in India, everybody knew Wipro. You know, but the way Wipro has been growing now, especially in cloud, AI, some of the new areas, it's an exciting time yeah. to be here. Yeah. An exciting time in the next three to five years, you will see our growth as we propel That's more amazing. momentum. Absolutely amazing. All right, with that, this has been theCUBE live coverage at Moscone Center in San Francisco for Google Cloud 23. On behalf of myself, Dustin Kirkland, Rob Streche, uh, our other hosts, John Furrier and Lisa Martin, uh, stay tuned, we've got uh, another half day of interviews coming up. Thanks for having us.